Hello everybody, my name is Danny Wilson. I'm the strength and conditioning coach and co-founder of Boxing Science. Today I'm going to be presenting a video on our Boxing Science Red Zone Circuits. We're going to be sharing with you some uh, conditioning drills uh, using limited equipment, body weight, and we're going to be adapting our Red Zone Circuits and our philosophies into boxing specific drills with shadow boxing, ladder drills, and also some bag interval work as well. But start off with, we're going to be explaining a little bit more about what these circuits are and why they're important to help condition a fighter uh, for high intensity fighting action. So what are red zone circuits? These are high intensity circuits that are designed to go into the red zone, which is above 90% maximum heart rate. These have huge benefits to cardiovascular performance but with the circuits, we're also going to be challenging a few different physiological and psychological mechanisms, such as speed, coordination, uh, anxiety control, uh, focus and concentration under fatiguing circumstances. So this is a little bit of explanation of what is the red zone. It's a term that we give to when an activity is between 90 and 100% of your maximal heart rate. We want to improve our ability to perform in this red zone because this is where boxing is predominantly performed in and we're going to explain a little bit more on a future slide about that but also performing high intensity interval training has a huge range of physiological benefits geared towards improving cardiovascular fitness this is a little bit of an explanation of what happens in the red zone i'm not going to go too into it because it's super scientific and we do explain more about this in our programs and on the boxing science membership but if you want to take a screenshot of this photo right here please be my guest and take in what actually happens in the red zone and why it's so beneficial for cardiovascular fitness but this is the main one that we want to look at why is it so important for boxing we've taken data from a range of different boxers over six to 12 round spars with uh, between uh, sorry, with three minutes of work and either 30 seconds or 60 seconds recovery. And what we found with this data is that 65% of time is spent over 90% maximal heart rate. And this ranges between 50% of the spa and some people even go to 80% of the work spent in the red zone, so above 90% maximum heart rate. And the average time spent in the red zone is 18 minutes, 16 seconds over a 10 round spa. So it's so important for our athletes to feel comfortable in being in the red zone and being able to perform at high intensities as well. So these are some of the negative effects that being in the red zone can have uh, on acute changes in performance, physical and cognitive. So you've got speed, coordination, force production and muscle tension, these all go down whilst you're in the red zone. Cognitive skills, anxiety control, you might end up feeling panicked. Concentration, your ability to focus whilst you're tired. Perceptual fatigue, whilst you're in that red zone at them high heart rates, you're feeling more fatigued than you might actually seem. And then decision making, you can make the wrong decisions at the wrong time. So, they, all these physical and cognitive effects show that in the importance of utilizing some sort of different uh, conditioning drill to help train these adaptations whilst being in a fatigue condition. So normally we use uh, high intensity interval training using the treadmill. However, we're missing some of these factors here when we're doing the running. So like we're not challenging speed and coordination because we're just running in a straight line not affecting decision making and, and concentration because again when we're on treadmill we can go elsewhere so uh, mentally so w this shows the importance of doing these circuits because doing something like footwork drills under fatiguing situations this is challenging our speed and coordination but also as concentration and decision making as well doing med ball slams whilst in the red zone this is encouraging force production and muscle tension under fatiguing situations. So this is why we use red zone circuits a lot at Boxing Science.
So these are the workouts that we're going to be sharing with you today. We're going to be sharing an equipment workout, body weight workout, and we're going to be showing you two boxing workouts. One is going to be no equipment whatsoever, utilising shadow boxing and footwork, and also we're going to be sharing with you a bag interval session. Okay, so let's take a look at the workouts on this video. Uh, we're going to start off with a body weight workout. We start with 50 seconds of sprinting on the spot. This is a preloading exercise to help increase that heart rate response to try and drive into the red zone before we get into our uh, Tabata style intervals. So we do 50 seconds, then 10 seconds off, and then we start our Tabatas. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. A burpees, burpees to sprint, sprinting on the spot. We then return back to the burpees and work through these exercises one more time. And then we take a one minute recovery. On the next circuit, we start back on the sprint on the spot before we work through these exercises again. So let's take a look at how these exercises should be performed. So the next uh, red zone circuit that we're going to do is very similar uh, layout uh, with a 50 second preload of sprinting on the spot before going into a Tabata uh, style circuit. So we've got med ball slams, fast uppercuts, kettlebell swings and then battle ropes to finish. Rest for one minute and then repeat the full circuit again, starting off with the sprinting on the spot. So let's take a look at how these exercises should be performed. So this next circuit is a boxing specific conditioning circuit. It's going to be 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off with boxing specific exercises to challenge your speed, your coordination, your technique, your shape under fatiguing situations. So we're going to be doing 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off, starting off with shadow boxing. You've only got 30 seconds, so it's not like your general warm-up where you normally do it for three minutes. It's 30 seconds of intense shadow boxing. Throwing three to four shot combinations, moving your feet, fast hands, keeping that work rate nice and high. We've got skipping followed by a boxing ladder. This is a ladder drill, moving side to side, moving in and out of range. It's a highly technical drill, but you're doing it under high heart rates, so it's going to be affecting your concentration, your focus, your decision making. So this is fantastic to try and transfer this into your technical performance. Then we're sprinting on the spot and doing shadow boxing to finish. We're going to rest for two minutes. You're going to repeat that three to five times. Let's take a look at the exercises. And The last circuit that we're going to do is a boxing based 
uh, circuit. It's going to be on uh, the bag and we're going to be doing a, a mix between technical on the bag to doing a physical exercise on the floor. So we've got four shot combinations followed by sprinting on the spot. We're doing 30 second intervals, so you do 30 seconds on the uh, technical component on the bag and then 30 seconds on the physical component on the floor. So let's check out Callum Bearder doing these intervals. All in the name of science, mate. So that brings us to the end of the video. Hope you've enjoyed it and taken great value from it and now able to put in boxing science resident circuits into your training. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate in contacting me through various uh, social media channels, whether that's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, just search Boxing Science, or you can email me directly, dannywilson at boxingscience.co.uk. Okay guys, thanks very much, and I'll see you shortly.